Hey y'all, poor man's passport guide here with Passport Bros rant number seven. Genesis, chapter one. Living in this world is a series of challenges and you don't always get a choice as to which ones you want. I've been married more than once. In fact, I was married three times and two of them were totally ill-conceived on my part. I didn't know my generation of women didn't want to be wives and living with a woman you can't trust can have deadly or near deadly consequences. I sacrificed time, money, energy, and resources all to make her happy. And I did all of this after these women had their fun with Pookie and Lil Ray Ray. I was the cleanup man. I was the guy who wouldn't beat their ass like they wanted me to in the name of excitement. I typically run away from fights, but they ran towards a brawl with glee. I served these women like many other men of my generation, and we got married and provided because we thought it was something we were supposed to do or die trying. It was something straight out of the John Henry playbook. You know, that strong black man with the sledgehammer who tried to outwork a steam-powered sledgehammer? You can guess how that went. He hammered away trying to beat the machine till he dropped dead while the machine hammered on its merry way. I had women with a bad attitude, barely masking their contempt for me, being on their best behavior in the beginning of the relationship for months and months until I was trapped like a rat. These women who will exploit and manipulate you with tricks. Battle Ready Klingon Women has the BGS Ibmore channel talks about. I was attempting to live up to the now irrelevant social contract between men and women that existed in my father and grandfather's time. Men out here trying way too hard to work things out in relationships that will go from bad to worse. And of course, my wives were hardly ever happy at home, at work, on vacation, and they were always working on the next Takamami ding dong harebrained scheme. Actually, one of my godforsaken marriages was legit and was based on kindness, love, commitment, and respect with one feminine, cooperative, and friendly woman. That marriage was the husband wife model, but it was short lived due to stalking, harassment, false charges, and general mistreatment from another woman who I didn't want anything to do with. Plus, she was already married to another guy. The other two marriages came with female bigamy and religious gaslighting. One of my wives never divorced her husband, who was the father of her children, and he had so many children by other women in the same town, I guess she decided their wedding, marriage, and having a family didn't count. My other marriage was cheered on by a popular global religious cult that sells a lot of books. They had rules that were freely allowed to be broken as needed. It wasn't even a legal marriage, but her cult member friends pretended it was. I won't bother to elaborate on race and class, but the only marriage that was worth dying for was with a non-ADOS woman. ADOS is American descendants of slavery. I'm one of those people, a Negro. Her race and class strongly shaped her into wanting to be a wife. She was socialized to be one. The sham marriages were filled with tricks as my black wives believed in magic potions and spells. Us Negroes were the poorest people with the most difficult lives and with all that, black marriages were the longest lasting from the 1890s to the 1960s. After slavery, we were the most married people in America and had the lowest divorce rate in America. Was it just for survival? Hey, I ain't saying it was all love and hip hop, but we stuck it out in the traditional style. I find in this modern world though, when it comes to sharing our emotions, resources, and life force, there are better ways to experience bonding. Chapter two, flashback. Oh. Flashback to the 70s. Infatuation was cool in the 70s. Hanging out with some cute dorky girl was just fine. Touching a tit was exquisite. 
Better's coming. Coming is better. Whatever. But the best is yet to come. Hopefully before the sun comes up. First sunset together. Hey, you were just trying to get lucky and there seemed to be no end in sight. And when the jeans got wet from the inside, you knew your time had come. I know. How many times is this old man gonna keep saying come? I'm not done yet. Before I snapped out of my nightmare, I would never have accurate descriptors for my BWs behaving badly. My formative years were spent with my Negro mother, who was a teacher by profession. And pops came home long enough to shit, shower, and shave. Moms and pops would do anything and everything for me and my brother. But mom was filled with explosive anger and rage and turned it off and on like a light switch. She had endless shaming, blaming, name calling, arguing, and contempt. She was always there though. So that's where I learned my black women love language lessons for my future as a boyfriend and a husband. Black women going off anytime, anywhere, angry at anything and everything was downright scary. I thought only my mom did that. Now, I never saw my mom threatening to destroy my father unless you count sarcastic snide put downs. In fact, they didn't divorce until they were middle aged in the 1980s when divorce was more acceptable to society. It was still alarming in the late 1970s, early 80s to find out that one of your high school pals' parents were divorced. I even met a few really cool black stepdads back then. Now, stepfatherhood has few benefits, if any, such as raising the kids of the guy who lives down the street. Women choosing not to be with their kid's father is a problem, and I was a simp-ass cleanup guy. I didn't accept being treated like shit, but these women called the men in their families to regulate me, shame me, or fight me for defending myself from their dangerous sister. I had women who helped spend my paycheck and then call the police to regulate me when they didn't get their way. I beat a girlfriend down once with an extension cord when she wouldn't let me get out of the door even though I was late for a recording session with the Jackson 5. I was pissed. And she was determined to block me from making money and block herself from receiving the benefits of my money. Sustainability didn't matter. Throwing a destructive tantrum mattered. Black women were taking on new levels of insanity and destructive behavior in those 1980s. And they didn't need black men unless we served them as an attack dog, an income stream, dick on demand, and took the abuse or left. When I needed new socks, she tagged along with me to see if she needed new socks, or really to see if anybody was going to talk to me or I was going to be interested in someone else in the street tagging along with me over and over and over for no reason. I'm going to look at a head of lettuce. Oh, you want to go get head? I'm coming with you. Ugh. We had matching socks, glocks, and matching everything. Things that I specifically needed, she suddenly needed too for no reason. So perverted and childish. Food stamps, checks, and free housing were offered to women with kids when the man finally said, fuck it, and left. And the faster these black women could throw a tantrum and cry some tears, the faster social workers showed up at the door to console and fix her. What a racket. My other lessons came from Pops, who in 1957 did a stint in the Air Force, then air traffic controller, then mailman, then singer-songwriter, then big union rep. This guy worked hard to support his wife and kids. Thanks, Pops. Thanks, Moms. That old-time family structure, which deteriorated in the late 60s, early 1970s, after civil rights, doesn't mean much at all now. Marriage is falling down worldwide, but in the West, it's finished. BWs are socialized to be strong and independent and don't need a man. And in my early days as a father, I had neighborhood boys gravitate towards me looking for some fatherly direction and had the mothers of these boys cancel their sons hanging out with me and my son because it didn't serve their selfish needs. I was just looking for peace. 
And I got to the point where I was telling my partner, after being physically assaulted and constantly threatened, to go ahead and do it. Kill me. Put me out of my misery. Just make sure you finish, because if I get up, I'm going to kill the fuck out of you. Waking up early in the morning to find your woman standing over your bed, huffing and puffing at you like a snarling animal. No, really, she's snarling. Not fun. Luckily, I checked out. The sooner men know they have this option, the better. Flash forward. We're in 2023, 36 years after my first go-round. So big shout out to the black male scholars and thinkers of the black manosphere and many others who have given me words and ideas to articulate what was once taboo to try to even talk about. If a man talked about his mistreatment from his woman inside his married life, men and women would always start with a guilt trip question. You could say my wife tried to stab me with a knife or bit me on the arm like a vampire. And the automatic question for men and women was, well, what did you do to make that happen? Having your woman start a fight, call the police on you, even before you defend yourself and having the cops tell you, you should leave your own house to let her cool off. That broke my mind. Being told to leave the scene of the crime that she committed. Women were being infantilized. Women weren't being held to any real accountability, even to this day. And after hearing hundreds of stories like mine, I finally started to recognize my full value. I escaped my old mental prison, and I'm getting a second chance 8,000 miles away. Talking about moving to another town, try moving around the world on Social Security. It ain't easy, but compared to my old life, every day here in the Philippines feels like easy street. People say, you couldn't make it in America, you couldn't get you an American woman, so you left to go pay for it in the Philippines. I did make it in America. You can't come to the Philippines on a bus. And the short answer is the same as the long answer. I already paid for it. I'm paid in full. So get your passport, brother and I'll see you in Asia or anywhere else. Hey, do me a favor, hit that like or subscribe button. It's totally free. I worked out a deal with YouTube. All you gotta do is press it and we're good to go. And feel free to donate to the channel, PayPal, Cash App, or buy me a cup of coffee because who doesn't like a cup of coffee? All right, poor man's passport guide out.